let's go now to Kamal Fadel, the Polisario's representative in Australia. Uh, Kamal, welcome to breakfast. Uh, thank you, Fran. Uh, Kamal, you saw the film last night. What's your response? I did uh, see the film last night. Um, uh, I'm very surprised and shocked uh, by the allegations. Uh, the f- uh, I find the film is really uh, misleading, uh, particularly in the terms of the translation and subtitles from the lo- local language into English. Uh, a lot of what people are saying uh, is not what is uh, reflected in the subtitles. Well, just in terms of what's shown on the film, there were, as uh, Violetta mentioned there, or Dan mentioned there, several young men who uh, travelled, apparently, according to the movie, several thousand miles to come and tell their story again. So determined were they to tell about the slavery suffered by their people. Those young men uh, went there, uh, they told uh, me, uh, by invitation of Dan and Violetta, who uh, gave them the money and who bought a car for them and asked them to come to Mauritania in order for them to film them in Mauritania. And they asked them to say things that uh, they said on the film. They are on the record, uh, on camera, saying uh, all of this in detail and it will come out uh, to to light soon. So, uh, So you're saying they're lying in the film? They said that uh, they did that because she asked them to do it and because uh, she, they were given uh, money and were, uh, bought, uh, she bought a car for them and they, uh, they, they were saying that because she, she asked them to do so. But also even their, what they said in Mauritania is taken out of context and also is mistranslated. Do you believe there's any kind of slavery in the camps at the level of, for instance, uh, marriages having to be approved by the white Arab owners? I will tell you what uh, a member of the human rights team, human rights watch team who went to the camps. Human rights is a very reputable and respected organization based in America. And they, when they heard of these allegations, they sent a team who speak the local language and spent a long time in the camps interviewing the same people that uh, Violetta referred them to, to them. And they wrote, we did not find evidence of forced labor certainly not of slavery of the kind one imagines in, say, the 19th century USA context. We found no evidence of domestic labor either during our visit to the camps. So this is very clear, and the Human Rights Watch produced a report of two, over 200 pages. Uh, what they said but the Human Rights Watch also said, uh, after, in terms of the testimony they heard, um, that there was testimony about vestiges of slavery that continue, and it did go to the notion of the owner's, owner's ability to grant or withhold consent for a slave woman's marriage. Do you accept that? Uh, that is uh, said in a different way. What they, they said vestiges, and they said that this practice is related to religion, and what happens is that uh, women who, uh, every Sahrawi woman, no matter what color or creed she, she is from, is by uh, culture or tradition is requested to be given away by someone. If her father is not available, she asks uh, her uncle or someone from her family to give her, you know, uh, not permission, but to give her away to her new husband. All right. And that some of the people who had that relationship with uh, uh, coming from all times with a certain family, they required that. But this is not required if the woman goes to court and wants to do a marriage that way in, right. in West Sahara and in the me, refugee camp. Let me ask you about Fatim's case. You brought Fatim out here. I'll ask you about that in a moment. But there she is. She was taken away from her mother as a three-year-old to live in the camp. What is that, if not slavery? Okay, Fran, uh, Fatim was not taken away from her mother. Fatim was uh, playing with a neighbouring kid. where her, she left, her mother left her with Daido the uh, adopted mother, adoptive mother, and her mother went to another town called Smara in Western Sahara. Suddenly, the Moroccan invasion took place, and the bombardment of the city they were on was happening. Daydu, the adoptive mother, took the team with her, along with 165,000 refugees. This is not a unique case. A lot of Sahrawis, many, many children, were separated from their parents because of the conflict. People were separated from their sister and mother, and, and, you know, all the families are separated. My Personally, I have left members of my family in occupied Western Sahara. So what happened is that Fatim, uh, her mother is in 
constant contact with her and she never said on the film uh, that uh, she, uh, Fatima was taken away from her or that they were slaves. Her sister never said that in the film. And they said, we have kept in touch with her. We have a lot of your pictures when you were growing up. And Fatim is an educated, article, articulate lady who uh, studied, uh, went to, to, to study. She's a teacher. Her husband is a fr Spanish citizen. He lives in Spain with her son who's studying there. And some of her children are studying abroad. Okay. Now, we just heard that you brought Fatim here to tell her story. But you just heard the filmmakers say that she told them, Fatim told them, she was not, she had been told not to talk to them. Did you instruct her not to talk to them? No. We did not, and I'm not aware that they even greeted her or said anything to her last night. We did not bring her here ourselves. She was invited by the Australia Western Sahara Association, and she was invited by members of the federal parliament. Who paid and, for her to come there? And she is staying here in Sydney uh, with, a, with a, an Australian from the, mem uh, from the Australia Western Sahara Association. Uh, we assisted her with tickets to come here. And I am surprised that the filmmakers are not happy and they don't want to see her here and they don't like to hear her talking to the media about her situation. Okay. I thought that there is freedom of speech here and this is a democratic country where everyone can speak. Okay, Kamal, we must leave it there. Thank you very much for joining us on Breakfast. Thank you. Kamal Fadel is a representative of the Polisario in Australia. And the film we're talking about, which has caused all this controversy, is a film called Stolen. It's uh, only at film festivals at the moment, but I'm sure you can see it eventually.